Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Youth Matters. On today's show, we are discussing online trading and the risks associated with that type of trading. Um, if you're into cryptocurrency, gold trading, or just buying stocks and shares, you know, get in touch, tell us your views, and you know, uh, join us in this discussion. As we are cryptocurrency, we are talking cryptocurrency, we internet-based trading currency. We are talking online currency. We are talking about 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 online Please, I'm going to go to discussion. Uh, um, once again, uh, great to have our panel members here to uh, engage in the discussion. Mujibul Islam, who's a cryptocurrency investor and also a teacher. Ashraf, who's uh, a business analyst and also an investment um, uh, investor in this new uh, form of currency. And uh, finally, Sheikh Salman Badr Al Hassan, who's an Islamic finance lawyer and Sharia scholar. So thank you for staying with us. We're now going to watch a short video just to explain a bit more about the specifics of uh, Bitcoin and how that technology works. So stay with us. Digital currency is a digital coin that you can send through the internet. This currency represents value that is not issued by a central bank or government, but is accepted by people as a means of payment for goods and services. Digital currencies have a number of advantages compared to other alternatives. Traditional banks charge fees to process monetary transactions. This increases the cost of everything you buy. They can even freeze your account and refuse to release your money if they choose to. But digital coins can be transferred or exchanged over the internet from person to person, person to business, business to business, without going through a bank. This means lower fees, no account freezes, no arbitrary limits, and no restrictions on your account. Your digital coins can be stored in a digital wallet, cloud wallet, or cold storage, and can be traded on a digital currency exchange for other currencies, including the US dollar, the euro, and many others. What is mining? Digital currencies are generated all over the internet by anybody running an application called a digital currency miner. Mining requires a certain amount of work for each reward block of coins. This work is done by solving complex mathematical problems while simultaneously verifying transactions on the digital currency network. All this work is done by software running on specialized computer mining hardware. When two people exchange a digital coin over the internet, other people record and verify that transaction. When your mining hardware has computed and recorded transactions, and you are lucky enough to complete a block, you are rewarded for this work with new digital coins from the network. Why should you mine? Well, one reason is because digital currencies are still in their infancy. In fact, Bitcoin, the first digital currency, was just issued in 2009. Since that time, the value of Bitcoin has risen dramatically. As the difficulty of mining new Bitcoins increases, the value of the coins have also increased. Thousands of merchants, including Dell, Overstock.com, Tiger Direct, Newegg, and many more now accept Bitcoin as a direct method of payment for their goods and services. As more places accept digital currency, the value of that currency tends to increase. More and more people are mining digital currencies every day. So that was just a short video explaining some of the basics of cryptocurrency. Ashraf, um, why are the um, why are the headlines always about cryptocurrency? Why is it dominating the news? I don't know. I think uh, as you, as time goes on, you're going to find that more and more headlines will dominate. But what you often do find for people in the space, I'm sure you know, you know you'll find other people that agree with this, is that when Bitcoin has a dip. Then there's a, the, the mainstreams, they, you know, they jump on the bandwagon of saying, no, this is it, this is the end of Bitcoin. It's been fifth, more than 50 times mainstream media have reported, you know, this is the end of Bitcoin. Sure. But for every well, time... Well, why is it that, you know, you've got other types of, sorry to uh, cut in, we've got gold trading, we've got certain mm -hmm. shares, but it doesn't get as much uh, coverage as yeah. cryptocurrencies t tends to be getting. I think, I think that's probably twofold. The f one which you probably touched on before is that there have been reported insane amounts of returns, returns of investments for people who are involved in, in, in Bitcoin or any other uh, cryptocurrency, you know, but that can be misleading. When you talk about um, the values of the investments, that can you know, have um, a negative effect on people to influence them to just put their, you know, their life savings or their mortgages, or, which you know, I don't encourage at all, because as I said before, to go back one step is that we should only be investing what we can afford to lose. But you know, the most people will jump on the bandwagon in terms of mainstream media is on the negative aspect of Bitcoin because 
you have to always ask yourself who's actually reporting the negativity. You know, for example, JP Morgan. JP Morgan on one on one hand would say, oh no, Bitcoin is, is has no application in the real world. A year later, so they, they, that causes the price to dip because obviously JP Morgan's massive. Okay, A year you. later or there thereabouts, JP Morgan changes its stance and comes out and says, oh yeah, Bitcoin, I can see Bitcoin would be gold 2.0 sure. or uh, you know, another store of value. Mm. So you, know, you always have to take a pinch of salt where the, the source is coming from because they have ulterior motives as to why they will be saying those things. Thank you. Um, well, Sad Salman, would you, would you say that the whole definition of currency has changed? Because you know, with this now digital currency, how, how would you define currency? How, you know, where have we come from and where are we going? Mm. Yeah, so it's going back to those first principles, the Sharia says that you can trade things for whatever you like. So the basic form of trading, if I swap a, a motorbike for a car, that's called barter. If I swap something that's fungible, such as uh, dates or um, wheat for a car, and, and dates, or, dates or wheat at that, or, or gold at that time is sure. being used as a form of exchange, a medium of exchange, then we would say it's currency for something that is uh, um, not, not a currency, not fungible. But we could also exchange gold for gold or wheat for wheat, and then that's a pure currency exchange, mm -hmm. right? That, that's a traditional way of looking at it, and there are, as I said, hadith on that point. So according to the Sharia, what, what traditionally Sharia considered to be currency was, in general, there's, you know, there's, there's different uh, sort of fiqhi views on this, in general, fungible commodities such as gold, silver, wheat, barley, salt, date, that, those sort of things that you could use as a medium of exchange. So that's, that tradition is the Islamic view of a currency. Mm -hmm. um, as I said, Islam prohibits us selling something that doesn't exist. So in principle, when artificial currencies came out, when, 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 when paper currency became decoupled from the gold standards, so, so it stopped being backed by a real commodity, then it, it, it contravened that basic principle of Sharia. Yeah. And so what we have now so is... For people at home, yeah. what we're saying is at the moment uh, you've got paper-based uh, Pound currency, dollars, yeah. which isn't backed by, say, gold or yeah. silver. That's in principle, we're... that is not permitted. That's by how Sharia. it was before. That's right. Yes, it's, in principle, it's not permitted. The problem is today, uh, it's imposed on us because that's the only form of currency. So what we say is in Sharia, we call this some, we call this umumul balwa, which is that it's something that affects everybody. You can't do without it. When I go to buy to the supermarket to buy cornflakes for my children or milk, I can't buy that without the pounds or the or the pennies, right? Mm. So I have to use that to do my everyday exchanges and trades, right? Uh, but at the same time, what the Sharia does not allow is to uh, speculate on an artificial unit. Yeah? Uh, and so I think what's happening here is cryptocurrency, like pounds and dollars, is a form of artificial currency. It's, it's different. I can see some, 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 it might have some merits that are different. You know, for, for example, the international exchange and you know, the efficiencies it can create. I, I can see those things. But fundamentally, it's another form of artificial uh, unit of exchange. And um, if people say, right, we want to use this to buy cornflakes or to buy an airline ticket in a different country, then they're using it as a medium of exchange. But if they're putting money into it, participating in essentially what's the price bubble, then mm. they're speculating. Essentially what they're doing is what you do in a casino. And it's interesting that the word dopamine was mentioned earlier. You get that dopamine rush that gamblers get, right? And that is a fundamental concern. And I think that contravenes a basic prohibition because the, 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 sh the Sharia would say you can use artificial currency today because you have no choice to buy your, your, what you need, but you can't participate in, an, uh, in a price bubble, whether it's pounds and dollars or whether it's cryptocurrency. Sure, okay. Um, Mujibul, uh, what's your kind of, uh, what's your take on what you've just heard? Um, I think um, a few things actually. Um, just to go back on the history of Bitcoin and how it started, because this was on the backdrop of the financial crisis in 2008. So, you know, we live, we have to live in the real world practically. And so the, the money system that was referred to, you know, failed people, people went to their banks and they couldn't, they couldn't uh, get their money back. So from then on, this idea of, of, of visionary idea of sure. Bitcoin came about. And well, so can I take a call and come back to yep, that? Yep, yep, absolutely. So if you hold that thought, I'll try you. and remember those points okay, too. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum, caller. Wa alaikum assalam, uh, Thank you there. for calling, brother. Uh, how would you like to get involved with the discussion? It's just a question for uh, Sheikh Salman Badr al Hassan. Um, it's in relation to the, uh, the principle of um, being able to buy or sell something that doesn't exist. Um, so, it's a question to do with um, the, the example I was given. If you have a car and you sell it to one person, uh, for a receipt, but then you also sell it to nine other people for a receipt. Now, my question really is, obviously the person that's doing the selling 
um, would be in the wrong because they're selling something that doesn't actually exist in real life. But the people that are buying it, are they doing anything wrong? And secondly, if those people then sell the receipt onto um, another person, so if, if I bought a receipt for a car that doesn't exist, I then sell it to a friend without knowing that it doesn't actually exist, um, am I doing anything wrong? And and the, re the, the reason why I ask that question is because a lot of people don't actually know how uh, a lot of these uh, digital currencies work. Um, so uh, by engaging in such transactions, um, you know, they might not know how it works, but is it haram? And I just wanted to ana produce another analysis. I mean, there's obviously patents that exist. There's trademarks that exist. These are intangible things. And, are, are, you know, a company could have a trademark that um, may be very valuable, but that company might go bust, and then the trademark may not be worth anything anymore. Um, so just, just a question for Sheikh Salman, if you can shed light on that. Okay, Thanks. thank you for calling, brother. Um, oh. Start if you want to yeah, answer yeah. that. So the first question was... Um, is it, it, it might be fraudulent for the person issuing the fake receipts uh, to, to do so, but is it, is, it, is it okay for the person who's receiving them? Well, um, here we actually have visibility of the whole process. We understand that the whole system is fundamentally fraudulent in the way it issues new currency. Um, and so the, the people who create that currency are doing something fraudulent in principle. And, it, and since we know the whole scheme is fraudulent, I, I would say that we should stay away from that. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. Would you will, um, in, in terms of the intangibility and the, and, and, and the trademark, um, a trademark represents the value that somebody's created in a name or, or a business. Mm. Um, so it, it represents the value of that trade. Um, so it's not something intangible. It's okay. the goodwill of the business. Okay. Would you will, um, in terms of uh, the, the call us uh, touched upon the fact that if someone's purchased it and, you know, if you're not in the know-how, but who owns these cryptocurrencies? Uh, the cryptocurrencies, when you have it, it's yours. So no, but, uh, no, what I'm saying is, sorry, who's who's producing these cryptocurrencies? So the the cryptocurrencies are mined. Um, so it's, it's the way I understand it would be, you know, paper is printed uh, here. The the crypto coins are mined. So that's how it would be. So rather than printing paper, you're mining so, it. So you know how, for example, we have obviously even in e the the currency in this country. That's obviously um, authorized by the government. You've got the central bank. But what about this digital currency? So th this there, is, this there must is, be an owner, right? Yep, yeah, that's right. So this is where the 2009 uh, to, uh, financial crisis and where this idea has come from, which is that bitcoins, there's going to be a limited number that will be produced, True. 21 million. And so this is where the value comes from. Just like gold is rare, bitcoins will have that rarity. So at the beginning, it was almost worthless. But now that there has, th there's been more value in it, that's where the price of, of the Bitcoin okay. comes through. Okay. Um, so that element of rarity is where, where this comes from. So the thing with Bitcoin is that there's an element of store of value. So people see that there will be prices, ri ri the price of Bitcoin rising. But there's also that aspect of, of, of um, uh, you know, the use cases. Sure, sure. The other point I sort Thank of you. wanted to, to make is that um, we're talking about, you know, physical things, um, but the way the future is going, it's becoming more and more digital. And that's the point sort of where sort of that's got me into uh, this industry is that the future is going to be more virtual, more digital. Um, okay. I, for example, you know, people don't need uh, physical money anymore. You've got your debit cards and your even your iPhone and th things like that to pay, pay for things. So the future is becoming more digital. So okay, sometimes, you. you know, Classically, principally, you know, uh, these prin Islam will have these principles. So, you know, will it really contradict it? Because there, there are, there are gov governance there, you know, the, the rules of maths. It's sure. not quantitative easing like governments do, right. because that's where the paper value goes, or the, or the amount of okay. money you have in your bank, the value goes down. So there is governance there. The system is decentralized. That's the other thing, uh, you know. The, the governments failed when the financial crisis happened. That's how this system has come about. Okay, so thank you. Th with the laws of maths, it's not human emotion, human psychology, greed, etc. The, the, the laws of maths will govern it, and so you can't really tamper with it. That's fine. But, Asha, coming back to you, um, s same question I'll ask after we take the next call, okay? Sure. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, caller. Assalamu alaikum. Caller, Assalamu alaikum. Welcome down. Yes, uh, um, brother, you're live in the studio. Uh, what would you like to ask? Sorry, I didn't quite... Yeah, yeah can you hear me? Yes, brother, go ahead. Yeah, what okay, I think I just put a volume. Uh, 
Yeah, if you could uh, lower your volume at home on your TV set. You can hear me okay? Yeah? Oh, we can hear you. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, bro. yeah, that, that's fine. Sorry. Um, yeah, so it's good Good you're having, having this discussion. Um, so I, I just caught... I just caught a bit of it, um, so I, I apologies to you, um, if I discuss anything that's already been mentioned. Uh, is, so this, I can see the title, online trading, is it worth, worth the risk? Um, but I'll just give my, my experience. Um, so I do know scholars um, on different sides giving their different, different views on this, and I, so I've spoken to different scholars on, on, on the issue. So I know about the difference of opinion. But on the the, the, the side of risk, it, it is quite risky. You know, like you have pe- penny uh, shares, and even when you have new, very new businesses, they can be very risky. So similarly with, with, a, with this cryptocurrency, because they're quite new and there's a lot of fluctuation, there, it's quite risky. And even though... Um, some of them, you know, like Bitcoin, they're decentralized. There are some that are not decentralized. For example, um, Ripple, is, it's not really a decentralized currency. But, but, and what also happens that people have to be aware of if they do decide to trade is that certain, um, certain people or, or groups of people, they're in the cryptocurrency world, world, they're called whales. So they've accumulated lots of these cryptocurrencies and then they manipulate the market. Now, even though, even though there is regulation coming into the sector, like the USA, and, but never, nevertheless, there is a lot of uh, manipulation that does happen. So people, when they do invest, they should just be aware of the manipulation that goes on and try to uh, av- avoid that. Now, the larger the cryptocurrency is, because there's over 3,000 uh, cryptocurrencies, you. The larger days like Bitcoin and Ethereum and so on, the chances of wells to manipulating the market is, is much reduced. Okay, thank you, brother. That was a very insightful call. Um, and uh, no, we haven't moved on to some of the stuff you've covered. Uh, Ashraf, coming back to, uh, back to you. Yeah. Um, so once again, um, we've spoken about the different types of cryptocurrency, but where is the accountability and holding someone or an organization to account? Who, who actually owns all of these currencies? I think that's... Are you, are you owning one of the currencies? Yeah. I mean, that's the, I think that's the, the beauty of it. Okay. Um, the fact that it's decentralized uh, means that no one person um, can monopolize uh, a currency. But say if there's corruption, if there's anything that goes on, who do you hold to account? Because but when you say corruption, what do you mean? A no, hack or... Say, Say, for example, whatever level of, uh, say, for example, if there's a risk associated with it, someone's, mm-hmm. um, you know, someone's been hacked... Okay. But that can't but, happen. No, so, so who, but, but you know, once again, going back to the fact that if there was any issues with, uh, you know, any uh, kind of currency here in the UK, any other country, mm-hmm. you could go to the government, you could go to the central bank. There doesn't seem to be a figure in an organisation that you yeah. can hold to account. Am I, I right? Think, I think, I'm I just think, trying to No, no, I agree, agree. Well, that, that's, that's, the, that's the most important thing, why, you know, all this, this community has come together. Because as we touched on before, after the financial crisis, we don't want one institution to be um, in, in control. There is uh, the, the magnificence behind it is just a technology called the blockchain. Mm-hmm. I think it is worth just taking a step back to answer that question is to truly understand what the blockchain te- technology is. And basically what it is is that it's a decentralized, it allows for a decentralized and distributed you know, group of participants to come together to form their own network um, whereby they own a cryptocurrency or something else and they can create scarce digital, digital assets. So in the case of Bitcoin, you know, it's a peer-to-peer digital currency which runs on what we call a verifiable public uh, ledger called the, the, the blockchain. So in order to verify that, for example, on my public ledger is the same as his public ledger. When I transfer you money, his public ledger has to update. Everyone around the world, their whole public ledger if, will update. If I wanted to invest in a particular coin, mm-hmm. where's the kind of credibility, the background, the history? of say, say if I wanted to invest shares in a company, I would research the company, mm-hmm. I would research, I find the, the out same, the, same, the same applies. So in, if, if we don't know who the owner is, if it's No, you shared, do, you do. Okay, and on that aspect, maybe I, I misunderstood. So the same way you had initial public offering, IPO, you have an ICO now. 
So the only difference is in an IPO, you buy a share in a company, like uh, Apple, for example, or Facebook. Yeah. In, whereas now, you, an ICO, initial coin offering, you buy the coin or the token that the, the company is you know, uh, distributing. So in that and aspect- who owns the company? Once yeah, so you can, this is this coming on to your point. The same way you research a uh, share behind a company, I research Apple, like, you know, Steve Jobs. Yeah. I can research who the CEO is, who the founders are. You can do and, But they don't own the token. If, as soon as I buy that token, I own the sole ownership of that token. But they, the company, will probably retain probably 20% or 10% for the founders or whatever. But as part of your due diligence to you know, invest, you need to research the founders. One of my key data points for that is to say, okay, do they have an all-star team? Mm. Is there a Steve Jobs running behind this? If there is that caliber, then you know, that makes me feel a lot more comfortable. Sure. Is there a prototype? You know, all these kind of things have to be considered. But the actual ownership of the token or the Bitcoin or the currency lies with the, the, the person who trades it only if it's on an exchange. If it's on an exchange, you basically forfeit the ownership because that's a centralized institution. And if they get hacked, then what you find is that your Bitcoins can, can go. But the Bitcoin itself or currency are nev have never been hacked. It's sure. the exchange itself. That's fine. C can I just add to that? Uh, We're about to go to a break. So if you yeah, know, sure. Um, the cryptocurrencies essentially make the individuals the bank. So when I hold my wallet, I have my money in my wallet. I am my own bank. The only way security comes in is if I have done poor, just like you have your house keys, you, have your, you put your key somewhere safe. If I've put my password somewhere public, someone can steal it. That's the only way someone can, can take my money away. Uh, in terms of the security, um, with Bitcoin, for example, there's like two to the power 29 sands of grains in the whole world. The security of Bitcoin is far greater than that. So th the, the, the technology behind it, the cryptography is very high level. So it can't necessarily be, you know, you can't steal it as such or hack it like that. So the weakness is in the holder. So if I have poor passwords, that's how it can be stolen. If I expose that, to, if I show that to you, that's the thank weakness you. in the system. All right, thank you. Uh, we're going to take a short break and we'll carry on with the discussion when we come back. So please do stay with us.